Hey everyone, I had such a wonderful time on our Tuesday Zoom and we will announce shortly the requested part two because we got about halfway through working on our worksheets. So if you missed part one or if you'd like a review, grab your worksheet. And the first thing that I'd like to discuss is the, is there any belief that you have limiting your ability to stay healthy? because we all know what we should do if we want to lose weight, if we want to change our diet, if we want to make our business work. 80% of whatever our actions are, our mindset. And it's incredible how sometimes we don't even realize we have these limiting beliefs, such as age, or I don't have time, or if you have a current um, diagnosis or injury or whatever it is. I had the belief until a few years ago that I would get one or two colds every winter. And if that's what I believe, I'm going to get one or two colds every winter. So I'd like you to just take a moment and write down any limiting beliefs that you have. And if you're familiar with making affirmations, go ahead and change it in the new empowering belief. This is definitely nothing to skip over, and it's probably the most important part of our exploration here. And when we did the Zoom, we all shared in the chat, and we'll start with this again in part two because I think declaring our new belief is absolutely very important. So feel free to even comment on this video for just some accountability and being heard as we all lift each other up and live our most radiant life. Okay, so we're gonna go through this kind of quickly, but the self-care stress management part. I'd like you to list ways that you know that you de-stress, whatever it is, without any judgments. Um, some ideas are taking baths or getting a massage, going for walks, meditating, doing yoga. I use oils and our little Young Living CBD. I love to dance, I love playing games, and I love silliness, but what, what you do could be completely different. So this is meant to be a little list that when you get stressed, you realize these five things make me feel like I can unwind. Write them down so you're really aware of it, so you could use them, just pulling them out of your toolbox, and don't have any stress or judgment around it. We had someone share that they, they don't feel like they are where they should be because they, they use wine. And I'm like, I, let, I invite you to let go of the guilt around any choices that you make. We talked a little bit about retail therapy and, and, um, and whatever you're using, let go of the guilt um, around it. If that's something that needs to change, fine, but the first thing that needs to change is your guilt around it. Um, I shared a story about when I was in yoga teacher training and we had a day on Ayurveda and diet and um, that all the things that we should be doing, all the things that we shouldn't be doing. And I'm, I was so like, this was like a two hour lecture and I was so overwhelmed by, I was doing everything wrong and I need to do this and this. And at the end, it was back in the whiteboard days, they flipped over this whiteboard that was full of all the shoulds and the shouldn'ts and the wow this is terrible and this is wonderful they flipped it over to a clean clean whiteboard and they said the most important thing here though is beers and franks with cheers and thanks is better than beans and sprouts with fears and doubts and it made me just completely relax so remember that Let's let our self-care and stress management first be um, ahimsa, <laughs> um, non-harming to ourselves as far as what's going on in our minds. So the first part was a self-care, stress management, ways that I de-stress. The second part I think is most important to me, um, net, no extra time, de-stress options. So we brainstormed things that we could do while we had to do other things, like some people always had to drive their kids somewhere or had a half an hour to, to wait before X, Y, or Z, or um, showering, cleaning, um, they had to take their dog for a walk. 
I've made up a nice little self-care routine around my evening routine of skincare and brushing my teeth. <laughs> so now I'm not cutting my brushing teeth, you know, short of the two minutes because while I'm doing my skincare, I'm saying my affirmations because what we focus on grows where our attention goes, our energy flows. So whether it's listening to podcasts while you drive or uplifting inspirational talks while you take your dog for a walk or you're cleaning, using your time to be, um, that you're already doing something to be present and mindful and have no extra time to do your self care um, is huge. When I'm in traffic, instead of getting aggravated or distracting or making a phone call or seeing what's on the radio, I really go through things I'm grateful for. And sometimes when I'm really frustrated in traffic, it helps me to even look at, um, oh, I'm appreciative of the sky or that building's really beautiful or that license plate's funny because our focus is what's most important. So also other no extra time de-stress options are deep breathing, mindfulness, just being present, like that example, um, podcasts, <laughs> gratitude while you're in the shower, letting it be a just self-love um, opportunity to be grateful for every part of your body, whatever it is, get, get creative on things that you already have to do. Where can your mind be while you're doing those things and let it be part of your de-stress and self-care. And the most important thing also is the proactive preventative part of self-love if we have our tank mm -hmm. full we are less likely to get to that place where we're depleted and we're really trying to figure out how to fill our tank back up and it was really brought to my attention that I didn't realize someone shared these things are all physical for them and so were mine um, these things were more mental and if we take care of ourselves physically then we're less apt to get really out of balance so proactive, preventative self-care could be exercise. For me, it used to be me time and going to get massages, but I haven't been doing that since COVID. Um, I have a lot of little oil rituals that I do in the morning and the evening, and not just using the oils, but having an intention around it, an affirmation. That's this is believe. Oh, and letting it remind me that I am worthy and I'm more than enough. Um, is the kind of affirmation and vibe that I that I choose to use when I use the little believe oil. Um, energizing food, I make sure I'm drinking Ninja Red every day and eating as many live foods as possible because then my energy is up. Um, I start going down a little bit of a spiral when I do too many carbs and processed foods. Um, but even like proactive preventative self-care is I'm staying with a friend right now and we giggle about, we showered today, we put on pants today. <laughs> Sometimes we'll just get all dressed up for no reason, just because it makes us feel good. And there's really funny, um, well, it's not funny, but it's true. Makeup sales have gone up like during every, like during the world wars, because it's something that's not very expensive that um, can help women feel, yes, there is a light. <laughs> on this. It's from the Christmas collection from Young Living. Sometimes little things can make us um, can make us feel like we're really adorning and nurturing ourselves. And we're, you know, if, I, I definitely like retail therapy as long as it's, you know, not out of our means. And <laughs> little things sometimes make a big difference. Painting our nails fun colors, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> and whatever you need with the intention of let it be self-care. So if you're taking time for yourself, don't let it be filled with guilt that you should be doing something else. Doing nothing is doing something. So I definitely agree with taking care of ourselves physically seems to be some of the best preventative things that we can do. And, um, but this is gonna be different for everyone. Go ahead and make your list. Okay, so when we had our Zoom, we all like voted on what we were most looking to explore. So after that, we went to proactive immune support and respiratory support. It's on page two. And most everyone that was on the call was were already familiar with Young Living and how to use the oils. So I know I might be going 
into a lot and if you need a little essential oils 101 just let me know because there's a lot of safety around using the oils topically aromatically and internally and when we're talking about using the oils especially topically and internally um, we're only talking about Young Living, not perfume oils that you might get at a discount store or, some, or somewhere else, even not a discount store, they're everywhere. So these are very different. Um, we're gonna talk about using them in the neti pot, maybe making capsules, making teas out of them. So quality is everything. Do your own research. If you're not already a Young Living member, um, talk to me or whoever invited you. I'm happy to sponsor you. Make sure you have all the information to use the oil safely and make sure you're getting the best price when you order. And also make sure you're ordering directly from the company. Never order from Amazon or eBay. Us as independent distributors are not allowed to sell at those, um, at those um, platforms because then you don't have the seed to seal promise, making sure what's in here is safe for you and your family. Um, I've had even my next door neighbor didn't want to pay shipping and she was already a member and she just wanted to get peppermint and the thieves cleaner and she got it and she was like this is not young living peppermint this is not the thieves cleaner but now we have free shipping so that shouldn't be an issue but um but just as a little heads up a lot of people adulterate or have there's fake bottles going around or they water it down or they just fill it with something else so that's something just want to make sure everybody stays safe so when we're talking about respiratory um, support I have the diffuser going on back there and I usually add four to six drops of some of my favorite respiratory support um, oils like RC stands for respiratory comfort it's a blend of eucalyptuses it's also gentle enough that sometimes I put it on my chest or the bottoms of my feet um, and Raven Raven Sara these are all our respiratory support oils um, the breathe again used to just come on and roll on and I would always put it along my sinuses um, mm. <laughs> but now it also comes in a regular bottle so that you could drop it in the diffuser as well but uh, a lot of people didn't know about the neti pot and I'm in California right now and the ash has been crazy um, so I've just been doing a lot for my sinuses to make sure they stay happy. And usually I just use um, Celtic sea salt or the, or the um, Himalayan sea salt. And I'll do a little, I was asked to do a little demo of the neti pot, so stay tuned for that. But I mentioned that sometimes I put some rosemary. Now this is the rosemary that's labeled for topical and aromatic use. We have a Vitality one labeled for internal use. It's the same oil inside, but let's just pretend I'm talking about the Vitality oil. Sometimes I'll put the Vitality Rosemary Oil in the salt, just a drop or two, but you have to put it in the salt, otherwise it's going to be floating on top and it's going to be way too harsh to use in the neti pot. But if it's already um, dispersed because it was integrated into the salt first, um, sometimes I do that for a little extra respiratory support. Um, and. I could guarantee the little video I do of showing you how to use the neti pot is going to be ridiculous, so stay tuned. So those are our favorite oils for respiratory support, um, and even the people that were on the call wanted me to go over the immune support um, options and protocols. So in addition to, we'll be talking about nutrition next. and foods to avoid and foods that you could replace things with and antioxidants and being sure what you're getting in your diet and gut health. I like to preventatively, proactively use thieves oil, topically, aromatically, and sometimes internally as well. And um, I usually do four to six drops in the diffuser. I do two drops in the bottom of my feet on each foot every single night. Um, and this is a hot oil. You don't want to put it anywhere other than the bottoms of your feet, otherwise your skin might get red and irritated. So dilute it with any kind of organic vegetable oil, um, almond oil, coconut oil, if you're going to put it anywhere else. The roll-on is already pre-diluted because we have a roll-on for thieves too. And also as far as topical use safety, if and when you get it in your eyes or anywhere else you shouldn't get it, never wash. Um, and oil off of water. It just goes deeper. Oil and waters don't mix. So if you ever get an oil somewhere it shouldn't be, um, once I was making capsules with frankincense and somehow it just splashed in my eye, I was in the kitchen and I just put some olive oil in the back of my hand and like I was putting a contact in, um, just put it to my eye and immediately it was fine. So that's a little bit of the safety over using the oils topically. 
but Thieves, which is wonderful for keeping our immune system strong, also has a lot of other products, um, such as the Thieves Chest Rub and the Thieves Hand Sanitizer. This is the big one that I refill the little tiny bottles with. It's interesting because the peppermint, I mean the um, alcohol that is in the Thieves doesn't come from petroleum, it comes from peppermint oil. And because I'm, I'm wondering why this hand sanitizer doesn't irritate my hands, um, especially like in here. And it's because, not just, I thought, wow, the aloe makes a big difference. No, even the source of our alcohol is different. So the same thing with the chest rub. It's not a petroleum-based product. And I've actually not only been um, putting up my chest and my forehead sinuses just for kind of extra comfort, I've been using a little bit and putting it inside my nose, especially like when I'm wearing a mask or <laughs> the Thieves lozenges. Having one in my mouth while I'm wearing the mask just creates this like <sighs> really intense um, aromatherapy atmosphere that I'm not even aggravated that I'm wearing a mask. It's lovely. And I honestly always have worn a mask when I'm on long plane flights because my sinuses were always so sensitive that they would get really dry and I'd end up with a sinus infection. And I just started wearing masks and it would just keep that um, environment so much more moist and I stopped getting sinus infections when I had long flights. But then once I discovered essential oils and putting a couple drops um, on my mask or on a cotton ball or in the filter or just having a thieves lozenger, <sighs> amazing. And now we have the aroma rings back in stock and I love them. I ordered, I ordered four boxes. Oh, they're out of stock. It's probably my fault. But um, they're rechargeable too, so if you happen to get an aroma ring, do not throw it away and, and ask me how to recharge them. So that's what I do on a regular basis, just for preventative um, maintenance. And if I feel like I need something more, and when I talk to the people on my team and my loved ones, I invite everyone to just have this on hand. Inner defense, if you ever need, quote, more support, this is basically the Thieves Oil in pre-made capsules. I keep it in my fridge just to make sure it's cool and, and in a dry, dark place. And I take up to five of them a day if I feel like I need, quote, extra support. Because if I'm really feeling crappy, the last thing I have the energy to do is make capsules. And you can't pre-make regular capsules because they disintegrate. But these are already pre-made. And um, I just invite you to have it on hand. I feel like it's an umbrella. You know, if we have an umbrella, it's not going to rain. So keep an umbrella in the car. <laughs> so um, inner defense is something I invite you to keep on hand. And everyone, even the mainstream media has been talking about the importance of um, just keeping our immune system strong. And they have been talking a lot about um, vitamin D and vitamin C. So supplements are kind of like the Wild West. You never know what you're going to get. And most supplements you absorb... 15 to 30 percent mm -hmm. in 24 hours. Um, Young Living supplements you absorb 85 percent in the first hour and that's because they're infused with essential oils which makes them more bioavailable and this is the first time I've ever taken supplements that I actually feel a difference. So the vitamin D just as a heads up in case you're like me and you don't listen and <laughs> you don't read instructions they are two little tabs and you actually want to put them underneath your tongue and let them kind of dissolve for like 10 seconds or so. They're actually really sweet because there's a little stevia in them. And taking vitamin D sublingually definitely helps the absorption. And they're kind of like little mints. You could just chew them after that. Mmm. Why are they so good? We have chewable vitamin C as well as tablets. Mmm. That's good. And then I go back and forth personally. This is going to go kind of into the nutrition and antioxidants. I've been doing extra vitamin C and vitamin D. And as far as my um, supplement game goes, I have been going back and forth with taking Super B and MU Pro with every other day doing the master formula which is four four capsules and I'm happy to send you guys any information on, on all these I could spend an hour just talking about master formula but 
the amount of goodness in all of these capsules is pretty impressive. Um, when I was seeing a naturopath, she was recommending a whole list of vitamins and minerals, and um, it was actually cheaper for me to get this, and I knew they were more bioavailable, and it is an incredible product. Because as we get into, do we go over thing? Oh, and the only other thing as far as proactive immune support is the raindrop oils. In case you've never heard of raindrop, it's incredible. And my, if you can only choose one of the oils out of there to have on hand, oregano oil, for sure. It's incredible. But the whole raindrop um, technique that you do on the bottoms of your feet and along your spine is, is amazing, and I'm happy to share about that as well. So inbox me about anything. We're going through this kind of quickly, and we had a lot of time on the Zoom to share and go back and forth, but at least we'll get you um, up to date so that you're ready for part two. Okay, again, on page two, we're just going to explore a little bit of nutrition and antioxidants. Foods to avoid, and this is different for everyone. Some people focus on um, avoiding inflammatory foods. If you haven't heard of Dr. Gundry, I'm fascinated by his theory on lectins and um, inflammatory foods like um, tomatoes, the eggplant, the squashes, all of my favorite vegetables, by the way, those are what I always went for in the grocery store. And now I'm switching more to spinach and kale and mushrooms. So Dr. Gundry and the plant paradox, it is dry as anything, but that book, listening to it on audible changed the way I look at food, but that's really not an issue for a lot of people. So I usually talk about reducing sugars, processed foods, flours, grains, but definitely GMOs. Genetically modified foods do a number on our gut. And I didn't create a section just for gut health because it's completely, it's part of all of it. Um, somebody mentioned that they feel such a difference by taking their probiotic. Ours is Life9. Probiotics are so important. And prebiotics. Ninja Red is a phenomenal prebiotic. You don't want to be eating foods that the bad bacteria um, consume, like sugars, processed foods. So shopping on the outside of the supermarket, um, good replacements. If you, if you don't mind this taste of stevia, I love stevia. I've been doing a lot of frozen vegetables lately because I have the best of intentions and my fresh vegetables seem to <laughs> seem to become compost in my garb in my <laughs> in my in my refrigerator too often so I've been doing frozen vegetables and like even putting them in single serve bags so if I'm making something I could easily just pick things um, do organic as much as possible I've been having so much fun with cauliflowers like the new rice um, <laughs> so they have cauliflower everything and um, but again, foods to avoid is specific for you. You you know what what your kryptonite is and and I'm sure that you know good replacements because when you stick to them you feel really good. And if you're having trouble implementing any of those, go back to the old beliefs and the new beliefs. Because our mindset is really what makes a difference in um in our choices. It all comes down to that. And if you need mindset support, we're going to be focusing on that in part two. Okay. Ways I can get antioxidants. Antioxidants are fresh fruits and, veg and vegetables. Um, all those organic berries and cherries. I get mine every day with the Ninja Red. If you don't know what this is, you want to know what it is. Ask me about it. Inbox me. And I'll send you information. It's incredible. Um, they say an ounce of this is equivalent to a pound of the goji berries. And, um, and people are asking me if this is organic. Young Living um, is all beyond organic. They won't um, plant on soil that hasn't been clean or is virgin or hasn't been clean for 50 years um, with, of conventional farming. Regular organic, you could convert from conventional to organic in three to five years, depending on the state. And that is nowhere near as long as you need to um, to. Um, get rid and clean the soil and because the soil is depleted we're not getting the vitamins and nutrients we need in a lot of these big factory um, these big farms and things like that I mean when I planted tomatoes in my garden I would I would crush up eggs and things like that to like put underneath my brassicas to make sure I was getting a lot of calcium and and vitamins and minerals they're not doing that on those big farms so um, yeah 
Um, we also talked about the longevity capsules that are in my little refrigerator. The ORAC value of those are incredible. I, on the Live Your Radiant Life Facebook page, I shared some graphics of ORAC values um, as far as there's a whole unit on antioxidants you could look at. And a lot of the foods that were highest in those antioxidant values are the spices. And it's really hard to take tablespoons of spices, but if you look at peppermint, for example, one drop of peppermint essential oil is equivalent to 30 bags of peppermint tea. So using an essential oil form and the longevity that's in my refrigerator, that's another supplement. Um, the ORAC value of that is like 150,000 for one of those. So that's something that I incorporate into my, my regimen too. I usually do that every other day at least. Um, and I usually do the probiotic at night. So again, gut health. If you're not, there's a whole, on Live Your Radiant Life, there's a whole unit on digestion if you would like more information on that. But if you're not going to the bathroom easily mm -hmm. and creating healthy results, <laughs> we talk about even what they look like, you might want to, um, you know, if you're not going one or two times a day, you might want to look into, and it's going to be different for everyone. Some people really... Um, respond well to digestive enzymes. Some of us use comfort tone or ICP on a daily basis. We like to call this IC poop, ICP. <laughs> um, just changing your diet could, could result in totally different results, adding probiotics. So um, gut health is something that is not to be scanned over. Please go to Live Your Radiant Life Facebook page, look at the digestive um, unit and inbox me and we could chat about it. So that is about it. That's what we got to, and we had a really lovely time. We're not gonna be recording these Zooms because we want it to be a safe place where we could all talk to one another and not worry about it being you know, posted online, but I also wanted to focus on being present with everyone, and I knew that recording it was going to make me not as present, and I also wanted to feel the community that we have and be really present to that and make sure everybody's needs were met. So. Um, keep your eye out for part two. We're going to um, plan another Zoom soon and just have a whole other part two of the event. And if you printed out your worksheet and rewatched this, we are going to be really excited to hit the, the rest of it very soon. Feel free to inbox me with any questions, and I'm excited to support you in your journey to staying healthy all winter long. <laughs>